Ready to unlock the secrets of a devoted bookworm's world? Today we are plunging into the pages with Vinton. Get ready for a journey filled with literary wonders, surprises, and endless fun. Let's dive in together and most importantly, have fun. Yeah! Finally! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Guys, uh, before we start, he's a friend of Prasalan. Uh, he Prasalan is a guest in episode 7 and yeah so he's in episode this is episode 9 I guess yeah so how are you Infinton? doing good nice nice you? I'm doing good yeah yeah we're, we're like uh, old friends right yeah it's, it's nice to be on your show thanks Finally. man thanks for taking your time and stuff you know yeah it's cool thanks thanks I uh, yeah. appreciate it so much yeah. so guys have been reading books and he told me he has read like for 250 or 300 books, right? Since you, yeah. you were born. Could be more. To Could be, be more, right? To yeah. be honest. But yeah, it's around 250 to 300. Okay. Like if I can count what more. Because cer certain things I wouldn't classify as books, but we're the novellas. Okay, okay, um, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so you consider yourself as a bookworm, book lover. Yeah, definitely. Right? book lover because okay. bookworm doesn't signify uh i'm not buried in books okay, okay. all the time but for me books are one of the loves of my life okay yeah i think books are one of the most interesting things about uh that humans as humans we have produced because it captures an experience that transmits it in a way that's succinct and clear i don't i think that people books should be read by more people and yeah i think i think we'll get into that more, okay right? so um vinton i'm going to be asking you uh relevant questions about book we are, because today we are going to talk about books okay and i'm going to be asking you also good or bad questions um Shoot. relevant question good or bad question and it's riveted you know yeah whatever so man. yeah are you ready let's go let's go what kinds of books do you enjoy reading and what is your most favorite book? Um, for me, a good book is a good book. But uh, the, what I enjoy reading in the categories are uh, poetry, uh, literature, and philosophy. Okay. Uh, so, and of course, uh, psychology as well. So to say what is my favorite book, uh, it, will, it will have to be uh, James Joyce's uh, Ulysses. Okay. He's uh, uh, James Joyce. Okay. Is, uh, author. Author uh, from Dublin, from Ireland. Okay. And he's one of the greatest uh, writers ever since Shakespeare. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, interesting. So, so that's your most favorite book author, is it? Yeah, you could see it. Yeah, because like I have, I have a lot of books like under that okay. category as well. If you want to know more, I can tell uh, another book as well. If you want, if you have to choose one most favorite book, which book are you going to take? Mm. Uh, I'm gonna be very uh, basic and just say uh, the Brothers Komarazov by Dostoevsky. Okay. Dostoevsky is a Russian author, okay. uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky, and his works has uh, influenced a lot of uh, Nietzsche's work in philosophy. So I am doing when you're talking about uh, just for a note when you're talking about uh, favorite books just now. Yeah, I just yeah. assumed that it was in the lit uh, literature section. Okay. Okay. I I have books uh, that I think are great as well, but in other categories. Doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, basically, Nietzsche too is one of my favorite authors okay. as well. But I and um, wh what's his name? Yeah, uh, Kant and Plato as well. Okay. In in that section, but yeah, we we can move on to your questions. If you want. All right. Okay. So, um, good or bad question? All right. What are your thoughts on the elite? On the elite, yes. Can you be more specific? Uh? Uh, the elite I'm talking about is the elite that controls the world, 
has the power over almost everything politics um, money and in in this in this place or like in in everything. the whole world oh yeah mm. what i um what are your thoughts on the elite what do you think or do you think it's real to have like this kind of people that like uh, are controlling the world to say that people control the world yes C- a certain uh, a certain portion of people do control the world because of their financial power and all this but what what you come to understand is that as humans nobody really understands what they're doing like everything is built in a system to contain the chaos that goes on in the world so if you want to say that there's a world order and there there sort of is but there isn't something that controls you by uh like a puppet string okay. you're you're always free to do what you want to do you know and the thing one of the things that if you want to resist is just to do what you want and not uh bother about the the things that society thinks is important unless it is important to you you know because your life doesn't have to be dictated by the elite even though it's like affecting you okay you know yes 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 yes, yes. and there are ways to go about that but yeah. you have to only you can know yes for yourself so to answer your question what do i think about the elite most of them are just people okay they're just people who they have they understand certain aspects of their reality to and aspects of their sector and they have the financial power to pull yeah. certain things yeah yeah um so do you think if let's say a lead existed okay or exists all right like do you think they actually do bad things mm. or influence people uh, in a bad way bad things as in like what? for example um drugs or mm. human trafficking or uh, try to control people with money well you know, control politics i mean we we definitely have seen examples with the cia pushing uh especially in america uh in malaysia i don't know so much but in america i heard some reports about uh the cia pushing drugs onto a certain part of the community especially in the um in the slums where a certain people certain marginalized people are uh forced to uh, uh they start they started to give uh dealers drugs to sell it on the sidewalk to influence that community and i wouldn't say i would say like because the elite has power it has the ability to to provide uh to have uh segregates of power that's affiliated to them because of the kaching kaching okay right? so because of that they can do what they want so what i mean by that is like maybe and i say to we may see it in a way that's bad as well of course and of course like it's not if you're thinking about it being morally ethically wrong of course it is ethically wrong so for me in my opinion anything that goes against uh, a human's will is something that's uh, ethically wrong so what i think is that of course like you to achieve certain things that they want and things and of course the bad the bad things will come as well and you can't and the thing is that what the only thing you can do is just resist you cannot help that you cannot if you are you have a choice with the lead it is the it is something it is your duty to just resist the power of it to resist the power is just to live your own life it's just to understand that you have a free will on your own uh, i go back to that just now but yes like certain things like i wouldn't i because of my moral compass that's a bit gray so i would say that uh it it is bad in a way for ethically and logically bad 
Okay. In that way. Okay. Yes. Do you think there are any possibility that they actually are cannibals? I mean, cannibals do exist. Uh, can we, like we, there are a lot of unfound tribes that still uh, practice cannibalism. Okay. But cannibalism is a way of preserving the tribe. Actually, it's about um, okay. Let's say you you're in a certain region, right? And there's nobody. You you don't have enough uh, animals, and y- the land isn't that fertile. And what? And you can't you can't do much, except to for some people to eat the members of your family. Okay. Because like that, members that have passed away, not not like okay. killing them okay. straight away. It's just and they don't and the tribes they don't do it like every time. Okay. It's just they do it. When somebody is dead, just to preserve that energy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but by cannibals, you mean the those are the elite, is it? Yeah. Like, do you think they are probably eating pe- human? Mm, it's possible. Possible. Anything. Anything is possible. To okay. Be honest. All right. Interesting. How has reading impacted your life, and how do you choose your next book? Ah. Uh, Reading, reading has changed my life uh, to an extent where I I wouldn't be who I am today without okay. reading. And I, of uh, before this podcast started, I I talked to uh, your brother about me taking a year off yes. just to read, just to read books okay. for one whole year, because I wanted to read what I could. Right, so for me. I would say during that year, I I learned much more in that year of reading books of psychology, philosophy, poetry, novels, and it all all the things that I wanted to learn, and I learned more in that than in the span of my primary school to my secondary school and even through form ah uh, form six. Yeah. So okay. I I would say that it changed my brain. It taught me how to think properly. Uh, it showed me, it showed me what reading was about, too. Actually, like after that year, I finally understood. Like, oh, reading is not about just reading words. There's an experience that's inside of a book. So to okay. answer your question, like it, it really helped me to become a better person and to see the world clearly. Okay. So how do you choose your next book? Hmm. Sometimes it depends uh, on that moment because I'm more I'm sometimes a bit impulsive in the way I choose things. Uh, for example, like if I'm interested in a cer- uh, certain topic right now, okay. So I would uh, read uh, okay. read that. Yes. Right. And if there are certain books that I have started halfway, I would uh, to like read read them when I get the chance. But um, for me, it's more about like. Books that are interesting, things that I want to learn okay. about. For for example, like uh, if if I was reading, um, let's say I was reading, um, let's say I was reading a novel, right? Okay. And then suddenly that novel, okay, maybe a Dostoevsky novel, and so within Dostoevsky, you would you would find uh, existential themes about morality, about culture, about how things are. Uh, Become, and so I would be naturally interested in uh, Dostoevsky's work, and eh, sorry, in yes, in Dostoevsky's work, and I would move on into Nietzsche, because he would be he took a lot of the of Dostoevsky's principles into his writing, and so what it does is that I want I would always try to go deeper in certain things, so the way I choose a book is like. When I have the interest towards something, right, I would go into it, and I would see what what else. I will go into the deep, deep end and try to understand what else am I missing to fulfill that uh, that satisfaction that I need for that knowledge because I'm always a curious person. That I find nice. It kind of uh, reminds me when I'm producing musics. When I'm like kind of listening to dubstep, it just like mm. 
uh, motivated me, you know, just yeah. to uh, produce this kind of music. When I am listening to Big Room House, I was like, oh, this is so cool. I'm gonna drop, produce another Big Room House music. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's something like that, right? I yeah. also had that kind of feeling. Yeah, you know? sure. Like usually when if I'm writing music, I would write uh, when I'm listening to Bach or when I'm listening to Miles Davis. I would try. I would go back and listen to the other jazz records or the other classical records that's influenced Bach or Miles Davis and try to recreate something. Yeah, 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 so yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. It's sometimes like uh, yeah. inspiration, right? Yeah. Would you rather dance? with a cannibal tribe or share a meal with a wolf pack? Uh, I'd rather share a meal with a wolf pack. Oh really? Because I don't I don't feel I don't feel like I can dance properly. <laughs> bro, you dance well man. You dance well. You can just dance with cannibal tribe bro. Nah. But after all I don't know what will happen to you, you know? No, they don't eat you unless you're a threat to them. So yeah. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Uh, so, so, so you'll take that, right? Like uh, yeah, yeah. you'll share a meal with the wolf pack. Yeah, but I, I don't. Hope, I hope you kind of befriend. You know, be just befriend with the wolf. You know. Yeah. yeah. Can you recommend any insightful books on zoology and business? Zoology. Yeah. Because um, uh, for me, actually, I wanted to be a, a zoologist. But you know, so if let's say I, I'm asking you, bro, okay. recommend me a book. I want to, about zoology and whatever about animals, and it's oh. it's a good one. I wouldn't say I know anything much about uh, books about animals. Okay, uh, to okay. Be honest, for for business, um, frankly, I haven't gone much into, into that business. Path, okay, okay. But okay. I would recommend. Some um some books by uh Tony uh Tony Robbins. Oh, so uh, it's business. Mm, yeah, Tony Robbins is more of uh self actualize uh self actualization. Okay, so okay. meaning like you do you self help books. Right? Okay, they teach you how to do certain things mm -mm. to achieve your goals, and those books are good because they summarize. Uh, they summarize things they learn from different practices into this uh, package for you to utilize. Okay. So it's like so a self help book is like a tool set, a okay. toolbox. But they don't. But just because you read a lot of them doesn't mean you'll be yes, successful. Yes, 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 they yes, just yes. teach you how to do yeah, certain yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but um, for me, for me, I went down the path of more like I have to find. Uh, the things, the tools, I had to find them for myself. I had to go the hard way to understand and to find the tools that I needed specifically that catered to me. Yeah. So I couldn't, like, I, I understood the value of self uh, books because I was reading a lot of uh, Rich, uh, Rich That Poor That uh, by Robert Kiyosaki, uh, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Napoleon Hill. So I have I had all these uh, things, and before that, like there there's a lot of other self help uh, self help books that I read, but then I felt that it was a bit uh, repetitive and bland because you get the same things over and over okay. again, just prepackaged. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's the thing about this world. It's not everything. There's nothing new under the sun. Okay. That's that's one thing that you learn in civilization that happens over and over again throughout history. You know that. So yeah, uh, I'm sorry I can't recommend you. Oh uh, no worries, no worries. But yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting. Which then for that is, uh, it's okay, but it's a bit outdated. Okay. Um, I I suggest you find, uh, how to win friends and influence people is, a very it's another book as well. Okay. Um, uh, I think one more book is the Forty Eight Laws of Power, by Robert Greene. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I think I think that's all like I have to recommend for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So entrepreneurs out there, businessmen, business women out there, make sure to take note. Okay. Um Are you ready for the good or bad question? Okay. Ride a donkey in the Arctic 
a walrus in the Chennai Timpishka. It's a boiling river. Right, the, the only right a donkey in the Arctic and eh? or a walrus in the Chennai Timpishka. It's a boiling river. Like the, it's the uh, only boiling river in the world. Oh, is it is it for fun or is it for what? Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. You got to you don't have it. You just wear a t-shirt and a pants. Okay. In both situations. Oh, I see. Riding a donkey in Arctic or <laughs> riding a walrus in the boiling river. Ah, uh, Arctic uh, donkey in Arctic. <laughs> yeah, walrus. The walruses will bite you. Huh? <laughs> Yo, bro. Yo, before actually you jump into the boiling river, actually you got bitten by that thing first. Yeah. Oh my god. Yo, bro. Bro, bro. Bye, bye. What to do? I'm already dead inside. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Can you recommend a hidden gem of a book that you think more people should know about? Hmm, a hidden gem, huh? Yeah. Maybe it's not that well known. Something that you think, okay, guys, this is so underrated. You, I should really like. You know. Okay. Um, don't tell me what you read is all about like it's all so popular ones mm, no right not really um, what's that book name one of them uh, I think notes from the underground is something that uh, it's a novel that most people don't read uh, it's by Dostoevsky and it's one of the most uh, hey, sorry yes that's that's one of them not from the underground by Dostoevsky but uh, Herman Hesse's books those are the books that are okay really what is it about? Uh, Herman okay I would I would recommend uh, somebody to read um, see uh, Herman Hesse's uh, The Glass Beat Game and I forgot one one book name uh, oh yes Goldman and Narcissus that is a book that I think every Herman has friend should read or every uh, everybody who loves uh, like good prose in general that is one one of the most uh, short books and is one of the most heartfelt it's basically a book that uh, talks about the the two ideals, the two characters, the one that follows the heart, and then one follows the intellect. Okay. And okay. so it's a okay. it's how both of them uh, okay. combine, how both of them meet throughout their lives in different points of their lives, and because um, Herman Hess was a friend of Carl Gustav Jung. Okay. So a lot of his elements of Jung's elements transmutes into uh, Herman Hesse's work okay, as well. Okay. So I would recommend everybody to read um, every book of okay. Herman Hesse, okay. actually. And um, I think Kafka is something that everybody, uh, every literature enthusiast knows as well. And another hidden gem uh, would be, it could be any category, right? Any, yeah. Oh. Uh, I would say reading um, if for if for a philosophy, I would I would say recommend Nietzsche's uh, uh, all too hu all too human, all too human because most of the Nietzsche's work, uh, one of the most the most popular works is uh, Beyond Good and Evil, so that is one one of the works that is very popular is one of the word works where uh, the famous phrase by Nietzsche uh, kept, uh, about God is dead and we have killed him that's the book that it originated uh, from so there are so many works of uh, Nietzsche that that is much more uh, like that has like that that has its value that holds on on its own like uh, the gay signs by Frederick Nietzsche as well. 
so that that's one of them and if for biography uh, purposes uh, um, I would say I uh, find the book uh, James, James Joyce's uh, biography uh, by Richard Keller I'm not sure so don't quote me on don't okay, quote me no on worries, that no but one of the one of the good uh, biographies that I read is like about James Joyce okay which I, I admit I'm a bias I'm a huge okay, James Joyce okay. nerd okay okay so yes oh okay that's okay. great thank you for the insights um what's a ridiculous issue happening now that shouldn't hmm. and how would you solve it personally uh the more i see uh, the issues of this world <coughs> the more i cease to care because i look at it as comedy okay yeah for me it's just comedy the more i want to uh, talk about it or okay, just like okay. try to educate people right okay it doesn't work okay because people they only want to believe what they want to believe okay they only want to hear what they want to hear okay so the thing is that that's the thing that's so ironic is that the truth is never easy to understand okay, okay. so what I'm saying is that certain of course there are things that are ridiculous issues right okay but the thing is that those are the issues that are pushed on by the social media by people who are in power and they tr try and push it to the generation to get a certain reaction whether it's fear mongering uh, whether it's to incite a certain like race hit against okay. each other all these things are just games that are played by the quote-unquote elite okay like that just to just to make just to make us like at odds have odds with each other and just to generate certain things but most of the time politicians are just on the same I don't say they're on the same side like nobody there's no actual opposition okay, okay. It's, like, it's a facade okay so I would say like to the more you just just let it be and just keep quiet to keep quiet and only to speak up when it's absolutely necessary when or when you have to speak up and in the moment there's a quote by Dante that says um, there's a special place in hell it goes something like this I'm just paraphrasing but there's a special place in hell for people who don't decide uh, don't decide between the good and the between it either sides during uh, during times of uh, integral uh, measures basically so what that means is that the the for the there's a time when you have to be in the middle there's times where you during the most important times you have to eventually pick a side okay right? okay so okay. for me that side only comes when it's absolutely integral okay for, for most part no not n when people talk about things on social media right yeah yeah is usually is usually and they vent out the things like oh this shouldn't be that is this religious issue like that like that like that right most of the time it's just because people have kept so much anger inside of them because they haven't trend they have they haven't transmuted this anger into something creative or into something that actually helps them so what happens so when when you have an outlet for rage all your rage goes into that and focuses on that and so what happens is that it becomes a feedback of things it becomes an echo chamber and it in, it generates more and more heat as it goes along so that's why when you hear conflicting beliefs or things that doesn't go against your point of view it doesn't um, go with your point of view uh, learn to learn to observe first see the what the person is actually trying to say and behind the post and try to see whether is it their programming or is it their perception that makes it in such you know so i would say like this uh religious uh with these issues i i i like to most for the most part i just laugh at it <laughs> okay because i just don't i just think that okay. we humans are better than this so rise up humans 
Okay, thank you. That's so powerful. Um, which book gave you a significant wow factor? A uh, significant what? Wow factor. For example, okay, you took the book and you didn't expect that it's going to be better. But when you when well, once you oh. have read that book, and actually it just gave you so much wow factor, like wow, it just so much better than what I thought. You know. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. One of the one of the main philosoph uh one of the main philosophers that I read uh, is Michel uh, Michel Foucault. So Michel Foucault is this guy is a person who always talked about society as a prison, right? Okay. So I didn't going into Michel Foucault in especially into discipline and punish. I didn't I didn't expect it to be very uh. I didn't expect to like it at all, but when I read it, it's like, oh, okay. And once I go, got onto his works on um, semantics and his structuralism, I start to be, I started to be, whoa, this is this is something that I have to go deeper into. So nice. I get fascinated by that. But uh, another one is actually, um, who is it? Yeah, actually. Like Herman Hesse was one of the first people that I I got I was wowed by as well. Like especially when I read uh, the main, the main is one of his books, yeah. And you guys should read it as well. But there's a lot of authors that I think like oh, like this is amazing, okay. amazing stuff. Um, I would for more modern authors, I would say uh, uh Kazuo Ishiguro. Okay. Uh, what's that book? Yeah, like his his work uh really like made me like oh this is good stuff as well. So I I I think like for me I those are some of the moments like I live for, you know. Like I find some obscure book and I go like oh this is okay something different. And like because I read um one of the things that I got fascinated by was uh uh the what? The poetic edda. Okay. By it's the it's the Nordic poems, by okay. and they talk about Loki. They talk about Odin. Okay. They talk about Freya. Okay. All this right. And okay. You start to learn lessons from it. Oh yes, and one more. There's a, this is funny, yeah, But uh, one more that I read that wowed me was uh, the Bhagavad Gita. That was something that I was like, oh, this is something. This is something else because if you read the Bible, if you read the Quran, then you will understand certain subtexts that are that you have to read behind the lines for it, right? So, when when you go into Hindu Hinduism, you start to see another perspective that uh, that can be uh, related in certain ways, and you get the moments of enlightenment you get from that is like oof, like that that's something everybody should read. Actually, okay. okay. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate Harry Potter as a movie? Depends on the director. Alfonso Cuarón was a good director. For Harry Potter and the Deadly Hallows, that was a good movie. Uh, for so some of the movies, they don't they they capture the world of Harry Potter, but um, not the intrigue that you get from Harry Potter's books. And I wouldn't say like. I'm such a big Harry Potter fan, even though I read a lot of his books, but uh, a lot of J.K. Rowling's books. But I think I think that is um, it's fine for an adaptation. And I'll be honest, it's just better. It's better than Marvel movies, uh. Okay. <laughs> so one to ten. Uh, one to ten. Yeah. Harry Potter movie. Um, I guess it's a seven point three. Seven point three. What about the Marvel movies? Uh, which which one? Uh, let's just say Avengers Endgame. Okay, I haven't watched Endgame. Okay. Um, let's just say Age of Ultron Avengers. Uh, it's all, is it the first one? Uh, second one. Oh no, I haven't watched. Um, it. Iron Man three. Which one was Iron Man three? Yeah. Uh? <laughs> Iron Man three. Um. Oh my. Oh man, I also forgot. It's been a long time though. <laughs> okay, let's say. Okay, okay let's Captain say. Captain America, win the Winter Soldiers. Ah, uh, oh, ten. Uh. 
Is it? Yeah, one one to ten. Uh, 5.6 5.6? Yeah. So that was like 7.34 Harry Potter movie, right? Yeah Interesting, interesting Because for me, uh, movies, right, are an experience uh. So when you're watching a movie What, I mean, I'm going a bit off Just off topic, uh, just to explain So for me, the main purpose of a movie, right Is to capture an experience is to capture an experience and to make you feel it and to make you understand like oh to live in that person's world right that's the main purpose of a movie is to make you be submerged in that world to experience the things the character is feeling the music what coincides as well the writing as well so you want to be immersed in that movie but what uh for mar- most marvel films what it demands is just a it's just something that is short uh, Like for example, you have uh, in long cinema You have uh, takes that are about 30 seconds, right? So when, when and for, for that, some people they don't have the attention span to watch it too Because they don't uh, understand why you do it and, they, and because of that, they say, oh, it's boring But it's not actually It's because people don't know how to see things So like for example, if you s- if you're looking at a painting, an abstract painting If you don't know how to look at the painting And you just say, oh, it's just a p- splash of paint, right? But okay. if you understand how to see it You understand the use of colours You understand the intentions of it And then you will start to see something that Oh, you didn't notice before So that's, that's one thing uh. So what I mean by Marvel movies are more of like movies that are Popcorn movies Okay. So they are movies for you to watch to enjoy okay. your friends But the thing is that Try to remember Try to go back to the time When you remember uh, Thinking about a Marvel movie For over two weeks Okay Have you ever th- Think about a movie For Marvel movie You mean like weeks? Marvel movie Yeah Any any of them I would say nothing Hard right To find a it's, movie like It's that. hard I might say maybe like First three days and then I stop. Okay. Maybe the fifth day, sixth day, I'll recall again. Wow, that's mm. so cool. For me, for yeah. me, that's why I, why I asked you that was that because a re- movie is something that for me I would remember. Cert- like if I watch a movie that was uh, something that uh, was an authentic experience, not not to say authentic, but that film delivered what it needed to deliver. Okay, okay. So I would think about that film for. I would still remember that film for about yes. months. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the thing is that those those are the words that stay with you. Okay. That's the thing that you want to get from movies. The thing that when you leave the cinema, you're still feeling you still have that inside of you. Okay. Yeah. Because when you're watching a Marvel movie, it's more of like you you watch a movie and you pay for it and you leave with just the okay. the laughter. Okay, uh, okay. Sorry. Yes, okay. yes. So yeah, that's yeah, yeah, I I Mm. I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Vinton, I want to thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you for sharing okay. about the books. Okay. I think a lot of you guys learned more about books and you know more about books. And make sure to follow him on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Can you like uh, on YouTube as well? Can you yeah. shout out to your social media? Uh okay. Um, if you guys want to follow my uh, Instagram, uh, it's Von Drix, V-O-N-D-R-I-X, and you'll see Von Dux Makina. That's me. And if you guys want to check out my music, go like find it find it on YouTube or uh, Vinres V I N R E S Q U E, and so yeah. Uh, that's. That's uh that's some of my stuff if you want to check out. So for my some of my just to put a disclaimer, some of my music um in the description I, I include a poem in almost uh in certain songs. So you can find them if you want. And because I'm interested in poetry as well, right? So some of my songs I I have uh poetry from movies that are clipped out. Just to because I felt that the that poem was what it needed. So yeah, go go and check it out if you want. Thank you, Vinton. 
and I also want to say that these mics are actually clippable mic and actually two mics in one cord so I'll link down in the description it's crispy clear easy just plug in and it's ready to go plug and use and my camera as well Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G Samsung crispy clear 4k resolution the best one for beginner if you guys want to do podcasts or youtube youtube videos and interviews that's the best choice for you and the tripod as well i link down in the description stable tripod to handle the devices that you are using and this cap also puma cap link down in the description all right uh this is actually a affili affiliate link that i'll earn some commission if you purchase uh, one and once again vinton thanks for the episode thank you thank for you so much me. brother yeah so good or bad talk episode nine i'll see you guys in the next one as always peace